सो हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द क्लास टुडे वी एक्चुअली कंटिन्यू विथ आवर लास्ट क्लास दैट इज कंडीशनिंग एंड इन आवर लास्ट क्लास वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द एक्सपेरिमेंट और मीनिंग ऑफ कंडीशनिंग सो टुडे वी आर प्रोसीड विथ द थ्री मेजर पॉइंट दैट इज करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कंडीशनिंग ओके सो यू नीड टू फोकस हियर विथ दीज थ्री पॉइंट सो फर्स्ट वन इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कंडीशनिंग और इन केस ऑफ क्वेश्चन यू मे गेट सम क्वेश्चन लाइक यू व्हाट आर द मेजर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कंडीशनिंग और मैंसन सम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कंडीशन एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा सो इट इज आइडर अबाउट फोर फाइव और सिक्स मार्क्स ओके नॉट फाइव मार्क्स इट इज अबाउट फोर सिक्स और समटाइम्स इट इज अबाउट टू मार्क्स ओके सो आवर नेक्स्ट दैट इज प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ कंडीशनिंग सो इट इज ऑल्सो अबाउट समटाइम्स सिक्स मार्क्स फोर मार्क्स और टू मार्क्स इट्स अप टू द एक्चुअली क्वेश्चन और समटाइम्स क्वेश्चन विल कम लाइक मैंसन टू मेजर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ कंडीशनिंग और राइट डाउन और एक्सप्लेन टू प्रिंसिपल ऑफ conditioning or explain the principles of conditioning like that okay so it is actually it is about classical conditioning in our last class what we done with uh, the experiment like uh, the dogs theory like uh, ivan pavlov that was actually given by ivan pavlov and based on that theory we proceed today and uh, major principles so we need to discuss here today okay so then last one it is education implication of conditioning theory okay so it education implication means advantage or significance educational significance of conditioning or classical conditioning theory okay so within these major three focus points we also discuss some important actually facts or some important points actually key points of uh, the experiment given by ivan pavlov with his theory okay so let's continue the class so let's start with the first that is characteristics of conditioning so here characteristics of conditioning our first characteristic that is learning is the result of condition or bond between nature response and an artificial stimulus so here i i i am clearing you one thing that is artificial stimulus stimulus means the bell okay in case of the experiment where a dog the bell the salivation or the food four things are there where artificial stimulus actually replace the natural stimulus that is the food okay so here nature response means the salivation secret salivation of the dog and artificial stimulus means ringing of the bell okay so learning is the result of condition okay it is about the condition or bond between natural response as well as artificial stimulus so in case of condition you may say that artificial stimulus and natural response together known as conditioning okay okay so next that is it is a blind and mechanical process like trial and error method of thorndike this actually process or this method is also known as blind and mechanical process because the dog follow to salive head on the sound of the bell therefore it is okay blind and mechanical process okay so next characteristic that is repetition is compulsory for this learning so repetition is compulsory because if you put some food Uh, to the dog uh, after having the food or uh, after looking at the food dog, the dog dog saliva head secret saliva head that means what if the work continuously done then the dog will uh, find a idea that at that time actually food was given to the food will be given to the um, dog okay so that, therefore repetition is compulsory for this learning okay because of repetition conditioning is happening okay so next characteristic that is there is no need of higher intelligence in conditioned learning it is biological okay it is biological because it is not related to like our last we what actually taught that is uh, insightful learning in our last class we already discussed this insightful learning okay in our previous classes insightful learning we learn and for insightful learning we need higher intelligence okay but in case of this higher intelligence is not important regarding conditioning high intelligence is not necessary okay because therefore it is biological because here we could not put we could not react or could not give any sudden uh, learning okay yeah just 
we follow a procedure okay so this is about the characteristics of conditioning okay so let's proceed to the next that is principles of conditioning or classically classical conditioning or major principles of classical conditioning okay so in case of principles first we proceed with or we will discuss that is extinction so here extinction it was noted by Pavlov that if the condition stimulus ringing of the bell okay if the condition stimulus the condition stimulus is the ringing of the bell okay is presented alone a number of times okay the condition alone of the actually the condition stimulus or ringing of the bell is presented number of times alone without the food the magnitude of the conditioned response of salivation begins to decrease and so does the probability of its appearing at all okay this process of gradual disappearance of the condition response or disconnection of the stimulus response association is called extinction okay so extinction generally means when the person or the experimenter could not provide food in every attempt on ringing of the bell then the secretion of salivation will decrease from the dog's mouth and that condition is known as extinction okay our next point that is spontaneous recovery so here it was also discovered by Pavlov that after extinction when a conditioned response is no longer evident okay when a conditioned response conditioned response means if the ringing of the bell will done then the dog will respond to saliva head okay so is no longer evident the behavior often reappears spontaneously but at reduced intensity this phenomenon the reappearance of an apparently extinguished conditioned response after an interval in which the pairing of conditioned stimulus okay ring out a bell and unconditioned stimulus that is the food has not been repeated is called spontaneous recovery the process of spontaneous recovery shows that somehow the learning is suppressed rather than forgotten as time passes the suppression may become so strong that where would ultimately be no further possibility of spontaneous recovery okay it means when the situation or extinction will stop for some time okay then after some days when again the bell was ring then the salivation will secret okay that is spontaneous recovery that means after some days extension means when when actually bell was ringing well bells were ringing or food was not given then this the amount of salivation will decrease day by day and one day it will end okay means if you will ring the bell or the condition stimulus will done then natural response will not come okay if the bell is ring if the bell is ring if against that that the salivation of the dog will not secret that means there is that is extinction but spontaneous recovery is that when you will actually when the dog will not uh, the ringing of the bell or food was not given to the dog or the situation the action will stop for some days when again the bell was rung then the dog will secret salivation okay i think you do not have any doubt with this next one is stimulus generalization okay so stimulus generalization means pavlov's dog provided condition response okay so condition response means salivation okay not at sight of the food but to every stimulus like ringing of the bell appearance of light sound of the footsteps of the feeder etc associated with its being fed 
similarly just assume when the dog was provided food then the dog saliva okay again based on the sound of the bell the dog saliva and sometimes the dog based on the food steps when the dog heard the food steps of the person who provided feed uh, feed to the food to the dog based on his food steps the dog saliva and sometimes the light for example when the food provided to the dog by clicking a switch um, or after clicking the switch the light will appear okay so after appearance of the light also the dog saliva so stimulus generation means that only not only given food or bring out a bell in many other aspects other general aspects when the dog saliva it is stimulus generalization okay Responding to the stimuli in such a generalized way was termed as stimulus generation, which refers to a particular stage of learning behavior in which an individual wants conditions to respond to a specific stimulus is made to respond in the same way in response to other stimuli or similar nature. Okay, I think you do not have any doubt. Okay, so next, next that is next last principle it is stimulus discrimination. Stimulus discrimination is the opposite of stimulus generalization. Here, in sharp contrast to responding in a usual fashion, the subject learns to react differently in different situations. For example, the dog may be made to salivate only at the sight of the green light and not of the red or any other. Going further, the salivation might be elicited at the sight of a particular intensity or brightness of the green light but not at any other. In this way, conditioning through the mechanism of stimulus discrimination one learns to react only to a single specific stimulus out of the multiplicity of stimuli and to distinguish and discriminate one from the others among a variety of stimuli present in our environment okay so i will uh, clear it for you stimulus discrimination means when in case of stimulus generation when i have already told you that if in instead of the food when the light will appear and after the light after watching the light the dog saliva because at this time he found actually he found that he, he was fed okay but when in case of stimulus discrimination a discrimination will come when the light is not as like the last light that means when the light for example just assume that when the dog uh, when the person or the experimenter open or click the switch and after clicking the switch a white light will open or appear okay when white light will appear the dog was actually have food okay but in case of yellow or green light affiance maybe the dog will not survive it so that is stimulus discrimination okay so extinction means when food was given but the no no not food when the bell was ring and food was given to the dog or after sometimes when the food will not given but the bell was rang and the food uh, the dog was saliva was saliva hit but after many trials after many times when only the bell was rang and the food was uh, the dog was not saliva hit continu continuously after ringing a bell salivation of the dog will decrease and that is extinction when the salivation will decrease 
because of the conditional response or that is a condition stimulus okay Con because of the condition stimulus when the dog will not salivate that is spontaneous no, extinction spontaneous recovery means when after some period of gap when again the bell was rung in front of the dog the dog will salivate that is spontaneous recovery stimulus generation generation means in instead of food when the dog heard the food steps of the person who fed the dog okay or the light reappearance of the light and also ringing of the bell so these are some stimulus generation because when the dog heard the food steps as well as if, um was the light appearance as well as ringing of the bell the dog salivate so that is stimulus generation not only by providing food in case of other some aspects also the dog salivate okay that is stimulus generation and it is actually main conditioning uh, but in case of stimulus discrimination it is not about only the food steps because the maybe the food steps of the uh, of other person maybe will not help the dog to salivate okay maybe ringing of the bell in case of other sound like and other music um, when the dog heard other music maybe the dog will not salivate because discrimination is there when the ring of the bell is actually keep a speech in the dog's mind then the dog salivate but in case of other aspects like other music other person's footsteps or sometimes the other color appearance light light appearance maybe not help the dog to salive it so that is stimulus discrimination okay i think with this principle maybe you do not have a doubt okay so let's proceed towards the next that is from the last experiment that is natural what is natural stimulus someone asked me in my last class regarding to actually clear the doubts so here net here are two things they are first one is natural stimulus so natural stimulus technically known as unconditioned stimulus okay okay natural stimulus technically known as unconditioned stimulus that is the food it results in a natural response called the unconditioned response okay if you will provide you provide food to the dog the dog will salivate so that is natural stimulus the food and the salivate is then unconditioned response where no condition where no other aspect of other stimulus so natural stimulus technically known as unconditioned stimulus it is the food it results in a natural response called unconditioned response that is the salivation okay next artificial stimulus that is the ringing of the bell which is technically known as conditioned stimulus okay ringing of the bell is technically known as conditioned stimulus or you can tell it is tell it is like a artificial stimulus okay this is substituted for the natural stimulus food okay it is substituted the natural stimulus of food okay i think you do not have any doubt with this okay so someone asked me in my last class that is sir what is neutral stimulus so neutral stimulus means just assume a dog was there and directly you ring a bell do you think the dog will salive it no the dog will not secret salive it because only ringing of the bell will not help him there is some condition there is some procedure so neutral stimulus means there is no any condition there is no any procedure just only because of the neutral neutral just just ringing of the bell will not help the dog to secret salive it okay i have no doubt okay unconditioned stimulus means the or natural stimulus means the food and the unconditioned response means the salivation of the dog and it is all about that okay i think you do not have any doubt with this okay so let's proceed that is education implication of this theory that is first formation of habit so with the condition theory or condition learning it can be used for developing good habits in children such as cleanliness respect for elders and punctuality etc okay so this theory helps you to formation of your habit secondly this theory also helps the students to adjust in any situation okay like any may adjust the situation or it help helps the student to remove anxiety or other fears okay 
next it is it is some sometimes help you to remove your emotional disturbances okay it's actually help you to eliminate your fears and mental at uh, nonsense activities or activities which disturb you okay next that is formation of a strong attitude so this truly help you to format uh, strong attitudes because class and conditioning can be used to develop favorable and unfavorable attitude towards learning teacher and of the school okay so this theory actually help you to format a strong attitude towards your school towards your institution towards your teachers towards your friends towards your content etc etc okay so next that is reward and punishment so it can be used to giving reward to children during the process of learning to strengthen the bond and punishment of to discuss the bad learning okay if you get if you learn good things that means you have been rewarded or if you do some not necessary activities unnecessary activities or bad activities or learning that means that will move towards punishment okay next it is removal of bad habit so uh, this theory also help you to remove your bad habits okay and uh, with the help of this method bad habits may be broken hmm. so last word is the right type of training so it emphasizes the importance of the right types of training during the early period of life okay this theory help you to uh, find out the right type of training based on which you can proceed towards good learning okay so this is all about the theory and uh, maybe uh, you have cleared all these things and uh, do not have any doubt and today our our learning part is completed so if you have any doubt with learning part you may ask me uh, okay easily and uh, thank you till that and in our next class we will proceed with some other new content so thank you till that um, stay focused with all the videos and uh, if you have any doubt then you can go through my all the videos and maybe you will get all necessary and easy points so that you can learn easily